Hello traders and welcome to a new day trading strategy video of mine. In today's video we're going to be talking about altcoin trading tips. Uh, not a lot of love for DCA, not a lot of love for, for books to read, uh, and Patreon really wanted me to talk about this one, so let's, uh, let's dive right in. So I'm only going to be talking about coins that are traded, altcoins that are traded to Bitcoin. There are altcoins that are traded to XMR, to F, to XRP. I don't want to talk about those. Uh, reason being is that I personally do not trade them, so I don't think that I have enough expertise to really talk about those. And B, uh, the reason I don't trade them is because of their lower liquidity and lower market cap as well, uh, which can make it a little bit harder to trade in the short term. Bitcoin altcoins, on the other hand, are um, quite liquid, especially on exchanges like Poloniex and Binance. So with Bitcoin altcoins, with, with altcoins traded to Bitcoin, we have two main um, separators. We have altcoins that are just traded to Bitcoin, and then we have altcoins that are traded to Bitcoin, along with other counterparts as well. So a Bitcoin altcoin, uh, just a standard one, would be like XEM, BTC, BTS, BTC, ADA, BTC. These are just only traded to Bitcoin. Uh, they, they might have a Tether counterpart in the future, but right now it's just Bitcoin. But then you have, a, you have coins that also have USD counterparts, like LTC BTC, XRP BTC, because they also have LTC USD, XRP USD. Uh, the behavior of these kinds of coins are going to be a little bit different. And when you trade uh, Bitcoin alts, you need to, you need to first um, gauge whether it's only traded to Bitcoin or if it's traded to the US dollar as well um, as to Bitcoin, because that is going to impact the market uh, significantly. So what I put here was typically, yeah, as, as you would know, typically we're going to have a lower market cap and lower liquidity for coins that are just traded to Bitcoin, and that makes sense. If it's not traded to anything else, it's going to have less markets available to actually buy it. Uh, Bitcoin alts with a USD counterpart, like I had said, like the majors, XRP to BTC, typically these have high market cap and higher liquidity. Uh, it's going to be not too hard to, to trade these short term. They also have a, more of an efficient order book, and this has more of an honest order book. I don't really love the wording that I used here, uh, but it was the only word that I could really come up with without typing out like a paragraph uh, for, for what I mean by this. Honest order book is BTC alts uh, that aren't traded with a USD counterpart are just going to show more basic supply and demand. I can show that here. We have XEM BTC, as you can see here. And if you look at the supply and demand here, we, we have the order, we have the offers, and we have the bids, buy orders, sell orders. And then we have how much Bitcoin um, per each order per uh, each bidder offer. If we see a lot more bids than we do offers, we can pretty confidently expect that the market's gonna have a much easier time moving upward than it is gonna have uh, a time moving downward because that shows that there's high demand to buy, right? And that's just simple order book dynamics that, uh, that you can probably learn on any, any channel or any article. You can see that 3716, we currently have uh, a large amount of um, offers there, so it's gonna be hard for the market to breach that level. However, this is going to be completely different when we look at Bitcoin alts with a USD counterpart. They do not have an order book that's based on supply and demand, but more of an efficient order book. What do I mean by this? Well, with, with these, with Bitcoin alts with a USD counterpart, we have an actual rate and then we have a traded rate. The actual rate, what I mean by that is, for example, if we have XRP BTC, we have XRP USD divided by BTC USD, and then this is really the actual rate that um, the, currency, the, the currency pair is going to be traded at. Then we have the traded rate that's going to be slightly different, and this is going to be what the actual XRP BTC that you could buy and sell if you would like to. So how do we, how do we get this data? Well, you can actually get it on TradingView. If you, we see XRP BTC here. Uh, this is Bitcoin, but let me actually just show you guys how to get the actual rates. So let's get the actual rate from Bitfinex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do... Um, so this is going to be ripple to the dollar on Bitfinex divided by Bitcoin uh, to the dollar on Bitfinex. So I'm going to hit enter, and I just hit this to, to do that. So we can see a pretty similar uh, market formation as you'd expect because these are essentially the same except one is actually traded and one is just the, um, you know, the, the actual rate. How can we use this and what does this mean? Well, as you might have actually just noticed, which is pretty cool, when this is going to move first, the actual rate, you know, is probably going to move first before the bots and uh, HFTs are actually able to to match that rate. Why do they match it? Well, imagine that 
XRP BTC is trading at 0.1. So, you know, a ripple is 0.1 BTC, which is probably never going to happen, but let's just say that does happen. What if the actual rate was like 0.11? where Ripple was actually valued higher than it was in the traded rate. Well, what's going to happen? Immediately, the order book for the traded rate is going to have a ton of bids. And also, bots are probably going to buy it up right up to 0.11. So from 0.1 to, to 0.11. Uh, be, why? Well, that's going to, if there's that big of a, of a gap, and if there's that big of an inconsistency in the market, then that inconsistency is going to be filled, uh, probably within a matter of seconds. Uh, if it was if it was like a 10% like that large. Uh, and then that's going to cause many bids entering the market. So the point that I'm just trying to make here is, is twofold. One is that the order book is going to more reflect that kind of supply and demand. The supply and demand to actually match the actual rate and not actually the supply and demand to buy and sell it, if that makes sense. And then the second thing that I want to show, and this is this is pretty cool. I know that these are two different exchanges. This is, this is Bitfinex, this is Poloniex. But you can actually use this as a gauge to see where this is likely to go in the short term future. So we can see that this is actually moving down a little bit. And that just moved down because this is going to move before this does. How can you actually use that in your actual trading? One thing that I want to caution, do not use these actual numbers because these are two different exchanges. And the granularity here is pretty terrible. I only get, you know, basically the same number. What we want to use is the shape and the change. When we see a quick change in this, we can expect that the market's going to probably begin to sell a bit. If I see just a jump upward very quickly, I'm going to expect that this market's going to jump up a little bit quickly with a bit of lag. What I can do is I can go right to my exchange and I could have this on a side window or on like a dual screen monitor. And I can, I can look at this and if I'm in a buy zone, if I really want to buy and I'm looking for a good price to buy at, if I see this rate just jump like that, uh, and that could be caused by either, you know, like Bitcoin just crashes downward or uh, XRP USC just, you know, violently moves upward. If that occurs, then this actual rate is going to tell me like that. I'm going to buy immediately. And what am I, what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be buying before these guys buy. I'm going to be buying before the inconsistency in the market is actually uh, filled. Uh, so that's a pretty cool way that you can actually trade this way. Um, and as you can see what just happened. Uh, this is really beginning to move down, and now this is going to probably begin to move down uh, as well. Okay, so let's go back to other tips. So that was tip number one of looking at the actual rate versus the traded rate. And again, that can only be used with these kinds of altcoins. It obviously can't be used with these. Okay, so then we, we look at volume. And these are going to have, just like the order book's different for, for uh, USD counterparts versus non-USD counterparts, the volume is going to be traded Similarly to the order book, as you'd probably imagine. So BTC alts, I just put standard volume. So you're probably going to see more than more than less just standard volume patterns where it reflects supply and demand. So we can actually just look at an example here. Um, you can still see this is going down, so this is probably going to lag a bit and then move down. Uh, yeah, so this this is offering actually a pretty good selling opportunity. To, and then, yeah, look, uh, right when this began going down, someone sold all the way down to there. With a low tail, and yeah, so this is a pretty good way that you can uh, trade. So let's look at like BTS BTC just to show my volume uh, thing. Let's turn on volume. So BTC BTS B, uh, Bitcoin just had a volume spike here, as you can see. This shows that there's a large amount of demand at this level, uh, and and this is more of an honest uh, volume assessment, of course, just standard volume. Uh, so this probably means either I know this is an annoying answer, but either this is overbought because we're in a short-term uptrend or this is a high amount of momentum for the market that's going to fuel it above resistance. Either could happen, but it is showing honest volume, right? And if we go back to XRP BTC, the volume that you're actually looking at is not is not volume that you directly want to trade for. It's actually volume that shows you how much demand there is to fill that inconsistency in the market, right? So if, peop, if bots and traders begin to see that XRP BTC is just beginning to move down a bit, the actual rate's moving down, then volume-wise, they might panic and sell very, very quickly, or they might not sell quickly at all. That's what's going to be reflected in volume. And also large orders are also going to be you know, reflected in volume to match that inconsistency. And if you notice here, volume doesn't really tell me, uh, with, with, with coins like this that also have a USD counterpart, volume's not as helpful because, you know, I see a volume spike here. I would expect a reversal. I don't get it. Uh, you know, we, we see the reversal here. Great. That would have actually maybe worked. 
This is a little bit confusing. Uh, I don't think I'd want to buy or sell into this kind of formation. Uh, and then this, you know, volume spike here, but then price continues to move higher. Uh, volume spike here, but that's just because if we had a, a large sell. And then a volume spike here and volume spike, yeah. So I typically don't even like to look at volume. And I know this is controversial, but I don't like to look at volume with um, USD counterpart coins. Of course, if I was trading like XDM BTC, yeah, you, sh you definitely should be looking at volume uh, because it's going to actually show you the actual supply and demand, just like the order book does, right? But let me go back to XRP BTC because uh, you know, we can see the, the actual rate versus the uh, traded rate. Uh, but yeah, so that's just my point on volume. It's gonna it's gonna behave similarly to, uh, you know, to this kind of method. Volume is demand to match actual rate. Yeah. Okay. Third, with different market cap coins, uh, you know, I, I say ninety five percent of the time you should use a stop loss, and yeah, you probably should. It protects you. There comes an issue though with low liquid coins and coins that have a very small market cap. Uh, it might actually be better to not use a stop loss. Well, why? If I go on Poloniex, my exchange, and I go down to coins that have very low liquidity, you know, only like 1.577 Bitcoin traded in the last 24 hours. If I click on this coin and look at the order book, and if I'm trading with a decent amount of capital, what could happen is if there aren't enough bids below my stop loss. So, for example, let's say I put a stop loss here, right, on just a really low market cap coin. If I put a stop loss here, and then the market actually goes down and hits my stop loss, if there aren't that many bids below price, what's going to happen? The stop loss will fill, the stop loss will turn into a market order, and the stop loss is going to sell at all bids below price. That's going to do something kind of scary. That's going to do something like that. And if there aren't any bids here, then what, what are you going to be doing? You're going to actually be selling down here at a horrendous um, loss. That can occur with low liquid coins, and that's why you should always pay attention when you're trading altcoins to the order book. Because if you put a stop loss in an area beyond where many bids are, you, you could be selling at like a like a 30-40% loss, even though it's only like a 5% actual, you know, if the market goes down like 5%, but you sell down here and like have a wild tail down there. Um, that, that can happen on coins that don't have a lot of volume and a lot of liquidity. However, uh, and that can be represented here, Coins that are like, you know, XRP BTC, you should absolutely always be using a stop loss because it probably, you're not going to have the issue where it stop loss here and it sells like all the way down here. You'll probably be able to sell at a pretty good rate with your with your uh, stop loss. So I, I know that might seem a little bit um, twist com complex, but with just imagine with large market cap and medium market cap coins, you know, medium liquidity, large liquidity, yeah, use a stop loss wherever you want. Small market cap coins or new ICOs, be careful with using stop loss because you don't want to be filling some guy's order who's buying at, you know, like 50% minus price. Um, you don't want to be filling that guy's order with your sell. Uh, that's probably not best. Instead, just use alerts. You know, if you see that the small market cap coin's not doing well, you can be triggered by an alert to your, to your phone or an alert to an email alert on your computer, whatever. And then you're going to be alerted that your coin's probably not doing too well and you might want to sell soon, you can just calm and rationally um, look for a spot to sell. Or if there's enough uh, liquidity and, and, and bids below price, you can just even use a market sell order and uh, get out of the trade. So yep, so that's my little uh, part on stop losses and uh, be, be careful with stop losses with small market cap coins. So to finish off with how I would recommend one to trade altcoins just from my knowledge and from my experience uh, in the past, with any type of trading, with any market, 90% of it is just your mindset. Uh, it, it's, I, I mean, everything, this is incredibly important, of course, but if your mindset's not in the right place, you're just not going to be making good trades. Um, there are hundreds, there are thousands of different strategies you can use to trade altcoins, right? But if you trade a, a decent strategy with a fantastic mindset, you'll probably be profitable. If you trade a fantastic strategy with a gambler mindset, you're probably going to be losing a large amount of money soon. So what are three components of a really good mindset? Well, the first thing that you want to do is be relaxed. Easier said than done, I know, but when when we enter a trade, when I enter a trade, you're going to begin to feel emotions. Uh, you know, if you see price go up very, very quickly, you're going to be 
incredibly happy. But then if you see the price begin to move down a little bit in a retracement, you might be scared and just want to lock in that profit. Typically, that's not that's probably not the right way to go. A relaxed mindset. Uh, it, you can you can become very relaxed if you I mean if you're um, if you like to meditate then, then that works for you. I like to exercise. I like to go for a run uh, during a trades when a trades active or go for a run before a trades active because I've found that that amount of cardio is actually really calms me uh, down and I can really look at the market more in a logical sense than an emotional sense. Um, also about exercising, balanced mindset is really important, especially if you're a full-time trader and you want to uh, pursue this for your career. You can't just be trading all day. That, that's, not, that's not healthy. Uh, you can't just be sitting at your monitor in your room, you know, in, in some dirty basement um, all day. That's probably going to lead to some pretty bad trading. If you look at the lifestyles of full-time traders, if you look at the lifestyles of institutional traders, they exercise a lot. They wake up early, they eat very healthy, and they typically have a confident, optimistic uh, demeanor when approaching the market. So that's what I recommend. Just copy the patterns of those um, you know, high-functioning traders and don't copy the patterns of high-functioning gamblers. That would probably not be a good idea. So this includes, again, just exercise, eat well, um, be aware of your emotions when you, before you trade. So you know, if, if you're really angry, if you're really sad, that's going to translate into trading. If you're, you know, thinking that you're the best trader in the world, that's going to impact your trading as well. If you think that you don't even know what you're doing and you just enter randomly, that's going to impact your trading. So have that balanced mindset and, and I mean, balanced lifestyle before you enter the trade. The third one is, is something that you've probably heard on every chat room, every article, every video is going to tell you this, every trader, discipline. Discipline will come if you are relaxed and you have a balanced lifestyle. Uh, if you're relaxed here and you're, and you're balanced in your life, you, you will be disciplined. Uh, discipline is tough uh, because the market's going to be making moves that might look really scary or might look really good and you might want to buy uh, because the market's just doing this and you might want to sell You know, if the market just starts to crash. Both are not exactly what we want to do, typically. But discipline will prevent you from doing that. Discipline will keep your hands you know, tied behind your back when the market's making some major moves. And will actually use logic instead of emotions before you begin to day trade altcoins. All right, so that's gonna be it for this dense altcoin uh, trading video. Just to recap what we've gone over, we went over stop losses and just be wary with small market cap and use them all you want with large market cap coins. Uh, we went over volume and how BTC alts that are, you know, XEM, BTC, BTS, BTC, ADA, those kinds of coins are going to have more honest standard volume. And then with BTC alts with the USD counterpart, typically you're going to see that the volume is just the amount of demand in that time frame to match the actual rate. And then I showed you guys how to use TradingView to look at the actual rate versus the trading rate, the traded rate, and you can use this to actually... Uh, Enter, enter into a trade that you want to take before other traders do so that you can fill the orders uh, that you want to fill uh, before the price actually jumps up or jumps down uh, by doing this. And I think this is, this is probably the, the most helpful. Uh, I mean, next to mindset, this is probably the most helpful tip that you're going to get out of this video, to be honest. Yeah. And then, yep, we talked about the order book differences and uh, the different kinds of rates of you know, quotes and uh, basis. All right, so if you liked that video, then you can feel free to check out my Patreon and begin voting on future videos as well. Um, I will be doing an interview that will be coming out this Monday, and uh, it'll probably be released around like uh, Monday night. It's going to be an interview with another um, YouTuber who's a day trader as well. So uh, with that, have a great day.